Now, we are on radical functions, and you just want to ask yourself, is there anything wrong with this? Is there any number I cannot have under the radical sign if I want the output to be real? Yes, you know that. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. Okay, and that's it. So we just want to avoid anything that's negative. So x cannot be negative, which you will write this way, that x is, um, is not negative. <laughs> this is how you're just going to say it. x is not less than 0. Okay, how do we write less than sign? Like this, x is not less than 0. Because if x is less, is less than 0, it's going to be negative. So the only numbers you want to avoid are all negative numbers. x can be 0 because the square root of 0 is 0 when 0 is a real number. Okay, so when you write the domain for this function, you're just going to say d is such that um, you're coming from negative infinity. No, we can't have any negative. So the first point you want to start is 0. Can x be 0? Yes. So we can't use this curve. We have to use the square bracket because it includes 0 as one of the numbers in the domain. So I'm going to erase this and say, yes, we accept 0 as an input. And then we keep going until we get to positive infinity, but infinity is not real, so we're going to avoid it and just stop just before infinity. See, I have that question. What's the number just before infinity? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's why you have to avoid infinity by all means. Now, let's take another example. Let's say f of x is the square root of x squared. What's the domain of this function? Is it possible that after you square a number, it will be negative? Nope. So, the domain of this function is all real numbers. Because even when you use x to be, if x is negative, say you take negative 4, the square root of negative 4 is 16, and the square root of 16 has a real output, so it's not imaginary. So, in a case like this, the domain is the set of all real numbers, okay? So, this is different, because again, when you take the square root of x squared, it's going to be x. Okay, I'm going to make it a bit more complicated as we go on. So this will be um, the set of negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so we're going to take a third example, which will be a little bit more complicated. f of x is such that um, f of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus 4. Now look at this. Remember, you don't want to have a negative value here. What you want to have is at least a 0. So whatever you have here must be positive or at least a zero. So the critical value you have to start looking for will be what will make this thing equal to zero first. Because you don't want to go to the left of that. You just want to stick to zero or go to the right of it. So you can solve this and get the critical values and just to tell yourself x squared minus four is equal to zero, okay? Um, and then you say, remember this would be a difference of two squares. That's x squared minus two squared equals zero. So you have x minus two, x plus two equals zero, which gives you x is equal to two or negative two. So these two values are important for you to determine whether you are going to um, use them or not use them, what direction you're gonna go. So let's look at the domain and see the areas we must avoid, okay? Remember, you don't want any negative value in here. So let's do a sign test. What's important is that this expression must be greater than or equal to zero. So you can write it here and say x squared minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to zero so that what you have here must be positive or zero. Now let's do a sign test with these two points. We have negative 2 and we have 2. So let's pick a number. I'm going to pick a number that is less than negative 2. So let's say negative 3. If I put negative 3 here, it's going to be 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 is greater than or equal to 0. So that's a good number. It means I can accept whatever number is on this side because it's all positive here when I plug it in here. I put negative 3 here. Now let's go to a number between negative 2 and 2. I'm going to pick the number 0. 0 squared is 0 minus 4. That gives me a negative value. So it means if I plug in 0 here, I'm going to get a negative value. So anything in this region cannot be accepted, cannot be in the domain. So I go to the third one and I say plug in 3. Well, I'm still going to get positive 5, so this area is accepted. Okay, so, and now I know my domain. Okay, so I know my domain because I'm only looking for positive values or at least 0. So we can write our domain now and say that the domain of this function is everything coming all the way until you get to negative 2, and you can include negative 2 because if you put negative 2, it makes this function 0, and you can take the square root of 0. So it will be from negative infinity to negative 2, then you skip, 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 then you start here again, and you can also include 2, because it will be union of this to you get to positive infinity. Now, this is the domain of this function, and that's exactly 
how you must write it. If you want to use the number line for it, this is going to be shaded, and then you go this way, and this is going to be also shaded, and then you go this way. But this part is going to be really thin, ooh, like that. Okay, that's, that's how you represent that on the number line. This is how you write it in interval notation. Okay, so that's that about this. The most important thing is make sure what's in here is either zero or positive. If it's going to be negative, avoid it, because that's the only case in which you will get something that's not real, which is imaginary or infinity when you have this. Okay, just before I let you go, look at this. f of x is the cube root of x squared minus 4. How do we get the domain? So the beautiful thing about taking the odd root of a function is that you don't care if it's positive or negative, every number is going to work. Okay, so at this point, I don't need to worry about what this, is be, this will be because it's an odd root. Okay, so um, the only time we have to worry is when we have to do square root or fourth root or sixth root or any even number root. But when the root is three or five or seven, you don't need to worry about the domain. You treat it as if it's just a polynomial. Okay, so the domain of this function, because it doesn't matter if this is negative, if you end up with a negative number, you can take the cube root of a negative number. You just can't take the square root of a negative number or any even root. So now that it's odd, so if this was 3, 5, you're, you're good. So the domain of this function is basically from negative infinity to infinity. Remember that if the root is odd, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity for any radical function. I'll see you in the next part of the series, and we'll be talking about exponential and logarithmic functions.